An agricultural war. The issue of survival in war is not just about soldiers on the front line. Recent forecasts on the prolongation of the armed confrontation put on the agenda the need to adapt to the new conditions of the entire civilian population of Ukraine. But it will affect many countries around the world at once. This year's problem of sowing fields and exporting grain is heard from all the authorities. And now it is used as a tool to put pressure on both sides of the world community. Ukraine calls to resolve the problem of blocked ports as soon as possible, and this can be done only by military means. Russia is blackmailing the world with hunger, demanding the lifting on sanctions and simply turning a blind eye to the nightmare that broke loose in the 21st century. In the first case, agricultural cooperation around the world will level off. In the second, Moscow is simply spending billions of dollars and euros already allocated to stabilize the situation. What's more, it's trying to make this very situation worse for everyone. Which path will humanity choose? Two years ago, Ukraine ranked fifth in the world market of wheat. The largest importers at that time were Egypt and Turkey. Last year, half of all grains was exported to Asian countries, including China. The European Union received a third of that amount. African countries received a little less than 15%. Almost all deliveries were made through the Black Sea region from the ports of Odessa, Kherson and Mykolaiv. Now let's remember how the war started. Russia blocked sea routes. According to U and estimates there are currently 25 million tons of grain in Ukraine. It can be exported by rail, with a capacity near a million tons per month. This is at least five times slower than maritime logistics, and besides, one and a half times more expensive. If Ukrainian ports remain blocked for two or three months, they will see what will happen. If no alternative logistical routes will be found, we will hear their voices louder and louder. The shortage of Ukrainian grain will be reflected globally. It is already reflected in all foods in any country in the world. Because there is a general balance of supply and demand, and no one has eliminated it. This is the end of the season, and therefore it is not much left yet. Grain available in Ukraine can be stored for no longer than two years. For the Ukrainian consumer, the already available stocks will be enough even for the next year. But exports will suffer a lot. On average, Ukrainian farmers planted half of their capacities this year. Add to this the problems with fuel supply, as well as the banal theft of grain from warehouses in the occupied territories, you will receive significant losses of Ukraine's export potential. Against this background, it is certain that Russia Russia's position as a supplier of grain will be strengthened until all the stolen goods are sold. We know this problem, we are struggling with it, and we even have some success. For instance, one of the bulkers that carries stolen Ukrainian grain, as we believe, wasn't allowed to dock in Egypt. After that, it was forced to maneuver and seek for the ports in other countries. We are watching it. The only country where we can't stop porting such a ship is Syria. For obvious reasons, it is Russia's closest ally. But we work with all other countries so that no one is tempted to steal Ukrainian grain. Rising food prices around the world are directly linked to the war in Ukraine. According to experts, this will have the greatest impact on Asian and African countries, which spend almost half of their budgets on food. And those who have money in the world will be able to buy on the world market first of all. In fact, this is one of the main elements of Russia's blackmail in the war. The war in Ukraine is now adding a frightening new dimension to this picture of global hunger. Russian, Russia's invasion of its neighbor has effectively ended its food exports. Price increases of up to 30% for staple food threaten people in countries across Africa and the Middle East, including Cameroon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan and Yemen. I discussed this deeply troubling situation with the leaders of Senegal, Niger and Nigeria during my last visit. They confirmed we are on the brink of a perfect storm that threatens to devastate people 
and the economies. Ukraine has already taken some steps to improve the situation. In particular, a statement was signed with Poland to simplify the procedure for exporting across borders. This applies to veterinary control of livestock and permission to transport at all checkpoints between countries. The creation of an organization of grain exporting countries is currently being discussed with the USA. It should simplify sales and at the same time support Ukrainian farmers. The United Kingdom, the European Union and Canada have abolished import duties on Ukrainian goods. So far, the issue of transportation remains intact as Romanian ports can no longer handle the unloading of railway cars from Ukraine. In summer, the situation will get worse. At the same time, Russia refuses to even discuss the unblocking of Ukrainian ports until all sanctions are lifted. Time does not play into anyone's hands. But the Kremlin is dragging the whole world to the bottom. So while Ukraine insists on a quick military options to clear the sea, the world community is only forced to increase the number of expert permits, prolonging the war and simply waiting for the Russians to stop trading stolen goods. Agriculture, however, is just one of the bunch blocked industries in Ukraine. Heavy metallurgy, machine production, chemical production – all these industries are currently severely damaged or under threat. While the Russians have not even mastered the production of nails, Ukraine managed not only to successfully integrate but to take its place in the world economy. Russia, which has never grown out of the status of an armed gas station, which is incapable of producing anything except grief, once again is trying to hold back the development of humanity.